Welcome to a Game of Thrones review. Game of Thrones is based on a fantasy book series called A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. It takes place on two continents, Westeros and Essos. This is a world where dragons and magic exist. Most of the series happens in Westeros. Westeros is divided into seven kingdoms and a region in the far north called Beyond the Wall. The wall is a massive magical structure that separates the seven kingdoms from what lies beyond. At the start of the series, Robert Baratheon is king of the seven kingdoms, having achieved that by his successful rebellion against Aerys II of House Targaryen, who was also known as the Mad King. The show opens with the rangers of the Night Watch going beyond the wall and discovering that an ancient enemy of humans called the White Walkers is back and heading south. Meanwhile, down south, King Robert is dead and a civil war has begun over who will replace him on the Iron Throne. While all this is happening in Westeros, over in Essos, Daenerys Targaryen is gathering her forces to come and reclaim her birthright. All this happens in the first four seasons. The first four seasons were among the best on television. In season five and six, the Civil War continues. You see the rebirth of a major character, Jon Snow of House Stark. And with the death of her children, Cersei Lannister is Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. By this time, some are beginning to realize that the White Walkers are a major threat that must be faced. By the end of season six, the reborn Jon Snow of House Stark will be King of the North, Daenerys Targaryen will be sailing her fleet with her army to Westeros. Season seven begins with Daenerys landing on Dragonstone, which is an island off the coast of Westeros. Jon Snow preparing to fight the army of White Walkers in the north, and Cersei Lannister preparing for war with Daenerys. Arya Stark returns and finishes wiping out the members of House Frey in revenge for their betrayal and murder of the members of House Stark. In season eight, the final season, Jon Snow finds out the truth about his parentage. He then joined forces with Daenerys to fight and defeat the Night King and his army of White Walkers. Daenerys is then head south to fight Cersei for control of the Iron Throne. The first family we meet in the Game of Thrones is House Stark. From right to left, we have Rickon, Caitlin, Eddin, Rob, Sansa, Arya, Bran, and of course the bastard son, Jon Snow. The next major house is the Lannisters who are allied to King Robert, but they're out for themselves. You have Cersei, who is the wife of the king. She becomes queen in her own right. Her twin brother, Jaime, who is called Kingslayer for killing King Aerys II at the start. Their children, Joffrey, who becomes king for a short while, Mycela, their daughter, Tamen, who also becomes king, Tywin, the patriarch, and of course the black sheep of the family, Tyrion, who plays a major role in the series. The final family I will talk about is the Targaryens. They are a family that ruled the Seven Kingdoms for hundreds of years until Robert's Rebellion deposed King Aerys II. The final two members with a direct line to Aerys II, called the Mad King, are Viserys and Daenerys Targaryen. The major character arcs, we will start with the Starks. Sansa dreamt of marrying Joffrey and becoming queen. And I'd be queen someday. day. 
Some horrible things happened to her. She overcame, got revenge, and became queen, just not in the way she thought she would. Jon Snow had a good arc until season 8, joining the Night Watch, befriending the Wildlings, finding out about the White Walkers, becoming Lord Commander of the Night Watch, getting killed by some of his brothers of the Night Watch, and being brought back to life, said he had a purpose to serve. But in season 8, that purpose got sidetracked in my opinion. Jon Snow is a complicated character. In this clip, Kathleen Stark explains what shaped her and John. When I couldn't keep my promise, and everything that's happened since then, all this horror that's come to my family, it's all because I couldn't love a motherless child. Arya Stark character stayed true throughout the series. From the time we saw her outshoot her brother Bran with the bow to learning the art of sword fighting while in King's Landing and seeing her father get killed on the orders of King Joffrey, all that shaped her character. I would have changed one thing. I would have had her kill Cersei instead of killing the Night King. Killing the Night King, I would have left to John. But that aside, it was a good character arc that ended in a good place. Brandon Stark is the fourth child of Ned and Caitlin Stark. When we meet him, Bran is 10 years old and loves climbing around the walls of Winterfell. His first life changing moment comes when he catches Jamie and Cersei Lannister having sex in the tower at Winterfell. Jamie pushes him out of the tower in an attempt to kill him. From there, Bran goes north and trains to become the Triad Raven, which is a being that can see the past, the future, and the present, and can go into the minds of animals. Nothing in this character shows that he wanted to or was trying to become king of the Seven Kingdoms. Cersei Lannister is a somewhat sympathetic character. The one thing I did not like about the character was the way they had her die at the end of season 8. I would have had her go out defiantly, being killed by Arya Stark. Everything she did was for her family to remain on top. I think a strong character like that deserves a much better ending. How Daenerys died, I didn't like. Nothing in her character arc said she would have massacred all those people. And bringing Jon Snow back from the dead just to kill her was weak in my opinion. Have her die in battle, getting shot of Drogon. She was a character that deserved a much better end. That the Starks ended up on top did not surprise me. When I saw them in season one, I figured they would end up on top at the end, but Bran becoming king I disagreed with. His character did not foreshadow that at all. And Jon's character, well, that is a weak reason to bring someone back from the dead in my opinion. I would have made Jon the king of the Six Kingdoms and Bran would have been on a small council. Sansa and Arya, their characters were great all the way through. While there was problems with Seven and Eight, it looked like they compressed two or three seasons into the final six episodes, but with all those problems, overall it was a very enjoyable show to watch. I recommend getting and watching it. Thanks for watching.